this is the second part of uh, our first lecture, which was uh, wireless uh, applications and technologies. In the first part of this lecture, uh, uh, I tried to give you an overview of the industry to just have a feeling about what are the directions in the industry. But I was not specific about any particular techniques that we can learn in a course. In this last part or second part of the lecture, I talk about those specific techniques which are needed to understand and to design wireless networks. And I will tell you uh, what are the things that we will study in this course, in the rest of this course. Now, to start with, I uh, go to this picture. This is the general uh, picture for a, a wireless network, really. Often when people say wireless network, I mean, immediately comes to mind that this is like a handset, and there is, a, there is an antenna somewhere in Route 128, and then I communicate wirelessly between them, and this is my wireless network. But in reality, wireless networks are not just that. Because when I want to talk, I want to talk with this guy, a fixed telephone somewhere, often, most of the applications. And what will happen is that at least I have to connect to this guy, and I should have another interface network between this guy and the public switch telephone network. This is the general telephone network. Okay, and I have to go through that to come to here. So basically, my wired telephone network is something like this: is a cloud, is a bunch of point-to-point -point, uh, connections. Could be wireless, could be cable, could be optical cable, whatever, and a bunch of switches and a bunch of computers which are controlling the switches. But this is huge. It's in all the entire world. I can connect everybody to one another. And each country has a bunch of these things. Okay? That they are, according to the standards, they are communicating with one another. Okay? And then there's a telephone somewhere in Japan connected to this network. And this cloud is all over the world. Okay? And then in here, in like Worcester, Massachusetts, I'm walking and I'm talking with this antenna, which is somewhere like in the corner of the town or on top of the hill. Now, the point is, uh, if it was like a fixed telephone network, I would connect it just to one of these switches directly. But I cannot connect these two like that because this guy or cellular phone is designed to move around. Today I may connect it from here, but tomorrow I may connect it from here in California and the day after, somewhere in Oulu, Finland. So when I'm going all over the world, I'm changing my connection point. Since I'm changing my connection point, this network, which was designed for fixed connection, cannot track me. Doesn't know where is my address. Okay. So as a result, I have to add to this infrastructure another infrastructure, which this infrastructure, I will call it wired infrastructure or fixed infrastructure for wireless networks. Okay, so this is a bunch of again databases and a bunch of switches very similar to this. But these uh, which are connected throughout point to points. But this network is fixed there to support the mobility to this guy. Mobility while this guy wants all the time to connect to this cloud. Okay, so it's like a cloud on top of this cloud, in fact, that I have to put all over the place. Okay, often we don't think about it that way. The only one which doesn't need infrastructure is cordless telephone. But the reason is that my point of connection is always the same. Okay, but in the, in the cellular I'm changing. So I have a fixed infrastructure. What do they do inside this fi fixed infrastructure? They have like these databases to tell who I am, where they have to charge me, how they have to charge me, because that charging mechanism is different from charging mechanism of this guy as well. Okay? And then also they manage my connection to the network while I'm away. 
That's the story of this part. Okay. Now, if you go for wireless data networks, that's the same. I have like internet, for example, in here. Somebody connected to the internet. I have a laptop who wants to connect to this guy. I want to go to the box, and I need some like infrastructure in here. If I desire that, this guy is going to be connected to the network from wherever. But, for example, when I buy like a Linksys and put it inside my home, and my wireless LAN connects to that, I don't have any additional, I mean, infrastructure. That's only that access point that connects to the internet. Okay, but if I take the same laptop, go to another place, I cannot connect with that type of connection. Okay, but what will happen in here is that, but I don't see the problem. I get my laptop, I go, I register in the airport to another Linksys, and I pay for that, and still I read my emails and everything because my application or voice oriented, uh, sorry, data oriented application, a small application. Or if I want to read, like, uh, download something, okay, I can download it because it's coming in, it's easy. But if I want to send a lot of things, now I will have some challenges. I will have some challenges. But if I want to have real time talks, it could be even more challenging now. If somebody wants to call me. If somebody wants to make a telephone call to my, like, to here, I will have a little bit more challenging situation. But all of these things are somehow taken around with minimal sort of, like, support, network support, okay? But, for example, if I want to have, like, so, for wireless line, really, I have a sort of virtual connection. It's like I read my email from other places, from, like, a web server, for example. That's easy. I can read it in there. But... If I want to have the same Netscape, and I mean a different, I have to reestablish my connection each time. And if I want to have like a seamless movement of this thing, then I need this backbone. When I go and I change my connection, two issues happen. Number one is that when I change my connection as from this one and I go to another connection, I have to have a smooth transition. It's not that I turn off and turn on. I have one application I'm running, I'm reading my email, and I change my access point. I don't want to, be any, to see any change in there. For that type of application, I will, have, I will need, again, infrastructure, fixed infrastructure for that. But anyways, today, uh, the, the fixed infrastructure that we have in here and we have in here, they are a little bit different. Today, they are, this is very minimal, non-existing for wireless LANs. If it's for mobile data networks, it exists. When I come in here, uh, this backbone that I have, in addition to like uh, supporting the mobility, it does channel assignment also. See, like for telephone communications, I have so many channels, and this guy should take only one of them. When I come to wireless, I have limited number of channels for, the, for this type of thing. And frequency allocation is not structured centrally. If they want to do it, again, they need some sort of like, infrastructure for that. So today, most of the access points in the market, the common ones that we buy, we put home, they don't have anything in addition to the access point. But now a bunch of like uh, boxes are getting designed and sold in the market which are controlling the access points to provide that seamless movement if I move from one access point to another one and also to manage the frequency and control the interference to improve the performance of wireless LAN. And that's the story of this type of boxes in here. So in general, uh, this type of infrastructure in here so in general, regarding to the wireless, we have two sets of, in fact, issues. One issues are issues which are related 
to communication between the access point and the terminal or base station and the terminal. These issues we call it air interface issues. And then we have issues related to infrastructure and the system. Okay. We call that networking aspects. So that's basically one thing. Now, if you want to go to more details and you want to compare wireless to the wired networks now, okay. So at the beginning I told you that wireless networks also they need wired backbone to provide frequency assignment, mobility management, security and other issues. Okay. Now I want to get to a little bit more details. This little bit more detail is that when you have a wired connection or wireless connection, there are some changes. What are those changes? And what is challenging to solve for the wireless that is not as challenging for the wired communications? The first thing is that wireless operates in radio. And radio is unreliable. Means that the receive signal strength is always changing. You may lose your connection. Okay? So you need a sort of connection management to know that where you are in the coverage or not. If you have a wire, they are always connected. There is no problem. Okay? You don't need connection management. The second issue is that wireless should arrange the change of connection which is the one that I told you in the previous slide. Anytime you change your connection, you have to do like registrations and somebody should do your call routing. So if somebody calls you, if you're connected to one access point or another, that guy should go to different access point. Somebody should handle that. Okay, so that routing is gonna be different. The third one is that wireless networks are, have always limited channels. I told you, there's 25 megahertz of bandwidth for what? For like AMP systems, for example. And each user has like 30 kilohertz. Total number of channels is something like 421. Let's say that you want to provide AMP services worldwide. You have 1 billion subscriber and 421 channels so what you do in each cell you have you have to create cells in each of those cells you have up to 421 and actually that 421 only 395 is voice the rest is like control okay so here we are somehow we have limitation on number of channels and resources so somebody should do some sort of radio frequency band management for us. While when I'm on the wire, no problem. I put one cable, and then I have two users, I put two cables. I have five users, I put five cables. That's, that's very simple. Means that in wire, resources are infinity. Not only in wire, one optical wire have like you can have terabits over one wire, okay? So a lot of information can pass. Not only that, you can put many, many of them on top of them and never ends, okay? There is no limitation of resources for wire. But for wireless, we have always limitation on resources. And the limitation that we have is the bandwidth Bandwidth is just like water, has limitation. So we have to rationalize that, especially when too many people are using that. I used to say that in the old time, when they had few showers, only ferro or narrow was taking shower. There was no limitations, tons of water. Okay, now everybody takes shower because, I mean, shower is available for everyone. So the city of Newton comes to my house and put cabs on my shower so that I cannot use more than a certain amount of water. Okay? The same is like with the bandwidth in here. 
the bandwidth when we had like broadcast TV, broadcast radio, no problem. Because there are only few of them. Now everybody wants to use it. So we have to somehow manage that frequency. And we didn't have that for the wire. Wire was like salt, never ends. Enough of that, always, all the time. The other one is like water. Now, wireless needs security. Because, I mean, the mobile user is always moving and changing its connection. So fraud is very easy. But for the connection of the telephone, there is no fraud. I mean, they bring it to your home. Nobody else can use it. So that's, that's what it is. So you have to somehow embed some sort of authentication, ciphering, to protect your data or protect your connection. Uh, wireless, since wireless is like uh, has very limited bandwidth and very unreliable bandwidth, uh, we need to have like very complex coding techniques to be used for that. Since the channel is unreliable, we need to have very complex modems for that. Since channel is so nasty, we have to know how this channel behaves. And all of these are complex signal processing phenomena. Okay? If we want to go to the wireless. Now, why do we want to go then for wireless? What is the what is the incentive to go for wireless? We go to wireless for two reasons. One is wiring cost is very high. For long distances, I mean, originally wireless came because they wanted to do telegraph in 1900 over the Atlantic Ocean. And alternative was putting cable on the Atlantic Ocean. And they had put the cable in there, but it was much more expensive. Okay, so that's one thing. Wireless is inexpensive. The other one is that wireless provides mobility. Okay, means that you can walk and talk. And that's it. That's why people are going to that. So wireless is inexpensive solution to wiring. It's a wire, inexpensive wire really, in a sense. And also it provides mobility ease of relocation and also mobile usage now the next thing is that since my mobile is moving my address has to move with it so always I need like temporary addressing in wireless this is a minor issue but it should be solved somehow one important issue about the wireless mobile is that since it is not connected, it's battery operated. It's a very, very important issue. First time I heard about it was Thomas Hogg. Thomas Hogg was chairman of GSM. He was the father of GSM, actually. And when the GSM got finalized, he wanted to do something like as substantial as GSM. And before he retires, he did a little bit work on the power and importance of the power consumption for the wireless because that's key issue in there it operates with the battery okay now there is another issue related to the battery which is, is the issue of like interference people when you have more high, high power you interfere with other people and also some people have like health related issues they don't know about it, but they are health conscious. So if you are more health conscious, you want to transmit less power. So you want to keep your power as minimum as possible. Because otherwise you are interfering and you are hurting. And also you are wasting your battery, which is also another limitation. With the wired network, I connected to the power, no limitation. Okay, on power. So... Another last issue, I mean, just to open up your eyes, is like wireless terminals are using very small screens as compared with the computers. So you need like 
special graphics for that, special handling for that. So these are a bunch of things. You can add to that. You can add more to compare wireless and wired. But the issue is much beyond that, like simple thing that it looks at the beginning, that I had a wire, I cut the wire, and now they talk if I have good radios. No, there are other issues involved in there. Now, how do you want to address these issues? Basically, you have to categorize them, and that's what I will talk about that a little bit later. Now, what are the elements of wireless networks? Basically, when somebody wants to design a wireless standard like GSM, for example, they come and they look at the services first to define the services, like voice, data, call forwarding, whatever. Okay? So these are the set of services that my network wants to provide. Then they have to define an architecture for what? For the infrastructure, how infrastructure works, and then define all the elements of that architecture. Okay? And in particular, you have to go and define protocol layers for communication between these elements. Okay. And then when you did that, you have to do some traffic engineering to know that who gets what and also some deployment strategy to support that traffic need. Okay. So deployment of wireless network and traffic engineering are highly correlated and you want to know that how it works in order to be able to provide the service. So these are all technical aspects. A lot of them are not radio. Okay. Now, however, radio among all of them is the most challenging, technically challenging design. So if we get these technical aspects and we want to just categorize them, technical aspects we can categorize them to technical aspects which are related to infrastructure. What is infrastructure? That was that like hexagon between what? Between wired infrastructure and the uh, access point or like base station. In there, there are several issues. One is deployment planning. How to deploy the access points or base station. Mobility and location management means that when I go from different locations, how I have handoff among those locations and how people can know where I am. Radio resource and power management, very, very important. Radio resource was what? Limitation of bandwidth. Power management, limitation of battery. I need to limit the battery because I want to control the interference and I want to reduce the consumption of power and radio resource management because I have only a little share that many, many people have to like take advantage. And the last one is security, which is a must in wireless networks because otherwise it would be fraud. Okay. Now, if you look at like cellular networks for the AMPs, for example, analog, one of the reasons that they went from the AMPs to digital, one of the good features of digital was that it's easier to implement security. For AMPs, it's very difficult. You have to add another pin at the end. If you have any AMPs these days, when you make your calls, after that, you have to have a security code, like a password to get connected. That's, that's what they have for the cars. So just because of the fraud. Okay? But when it's digital, security is embedded inside the digital. Now, so these are the technical aspects which are related to infrastructure. Now, then there is another set of technical, uh, technical aspects which are related to air interface. So in particular, I have technical aspects related to here, technical aspects related to here. Okay, I told you about technical aspects in here. Now I tell you about technical aspects in here. Technical aspects of the air interface. Number one is that 
You want to understand the medium. Why do you want to understand the medium? Because you want to know that if you put an access point, how far it goes. The second thing is that wireless channel has multipath and it limits the data rate. So you want to understand how much multipath is in there to know that what is your maximum data rate. When you think about like, like a wire, you think that wire is like a low pass filter, so bandwidth of that low pass filter is equivalent to your data rate, something like that. And then if you go with that type of thinking, you say that in wireless, I have infinite bandwidth. Theoretically, I can have infinite data. But no, you cannot. Because the signal gets bounced from different locations. And when it gets bounced, you cannot. That limits your data rate. And we will see that later on. Now, uh, since we are so bandwidth conscious, uh, we need to study different type of modulation techniques. And we have a harsh environment also. We need to try different type of things. So as a result, we have variety of alternative, physical layer alternatives, that we want to see that these alternatives, when I have multi-path, how they compare with one another. Okay? So a study of the physical layer alternatives is a part of like air interface design. So I'm sitting in a standardization committee and then I want to like choose between like pulse transmission, traditional RF or a spread spectrum. Okay. Then another issue which is important for the air interface is the issue of MAC layer. MAC layer alternatives. We have to take either like voice-oriented MAC layer, like FDMA, TDMA, CDMA, or data-oriented MAC layer, like Aloha or Carrier Sense Multiple Access. Okay. Now, uh, this variety of things have been applied to wireless uh, networks, and we want to compare, being able to compare them with one another. So these are technical aspects which are all related to physical layer. Okay. And we want to understand how the channel behaves to know how the system is covering. We want to know how we can compare, evaluate different physical layer alternatives. We want to know how we can compare different MAC layer alternatives. These are issues which are related to interface. These were issues which were related to what? Infrastructure of the wireless. What is important in wireless networks? For voice and data-oriented wireless networks, things which are important are a little bit different. For 2G system, for example, as we discussed earlier, in Europe they wanted to go to 2G action. They went to 2G because of roaming. In the state they went for the capacity. For the 3G people, the people went to the CDMA because they wanted to provide higher data rates and more flexible environment for integrating voice and data. For the 4G systems, people want to use a space-time coding, MIMO, to improve the capacity. Okay. In data-oriented network, the focal point is data rates. Originally, they started with 82.11 using a spread spectrum technology because the only unlicensed band that you could run high speed data was ISM bands, and FCC at that time was mandating using a spread spectrum technology in that band, in a sense. As time passed by, they tried to go around with it. Okay. So now we have OFTM in the same bands, 2.4. Now, then later on they went to the CCK modem, which is 802.11b, to increase the data rate from 2 megabit per to 11. Later on they went to the OFTM, 
because they wanted to go to 54 megabit per second. Okay, so the motive in uh, in the data-oriented networks is data rate. And then, in order to increase the data rate, you have to change your modulation technique. Originally, a spread spectrum is not good for high data rate. That's basic. Because a spread spectrum, as it says, you spread the spectrum. When you spread the spectrum, means that you need a wider bandwidth with lower data rate. That's the meaning of a spread spectrum. So it's not good for data communication, in which you are very interested in what? High data rate. The key, key to when you were buying like modems, first you had like 300 bit per second modems, then 2400, 96, 19.250. Always data rates is motivation. For local area networks, it started with 1 megabit per second, 3 megabit, 10 megabit, 100. Now they are talking about 10 gigabit per second local area network. So, motivation behind the local area network is what? Which is a data application. Motivation is what? Is data rate. Okay? The same is for wireless. Motivation is data rate. 802.11 originally is 2 megabit per second. You are forced to use a spread spectrum. You use it, but you are still, you need higher data rate. You go to CCK, which is a different modulation technique. And then you want to increase it again. You go to what? To OFTM, which again increases the data rate to 54. And then you continue that development with MIMO, which goes to 802.11n, which is 100 megabit per second. Okay. So the core of technology for data-oriented network is really modem design technology. Okay. For voice-oriented networks. Other issues are also important, as important. So when you're talking about a wireless LAN or even a WPAN, most important thing is physical layer. Because you have different alternatives that you have to compromise between them to get higher data rate. But for voice-oriented network, data rate is fixed and is low. So physical layer is not as important. So in earlier days, like for mobile, if you wanted to teach, you look at the books in the mobile communication for cellular. Physical layer is very little. It's only channel, which is the issue of coverage, how it covers. Okay, and then some issues about network, how to connect the network together, how to organize the handoff and whatever. But more modern time, when we are talking about wireless LANs and WPANs. It is dominated with physical layer because the data rate is the important issue and data rate is controlled by modem design technology. And when I change the modem design technology, I have to learn that. Okay. So early wireless lines were simple and I have a friend of mine, this is computer scientist, and he is very popular actually in writing commercial papers in these areas. So up to like uh, 802.11 frequency hopping, direct sequence he was like comfortable, then suddenly 802.11b came and he calls me Kave, <laughs> how does this work? Because now it was I mean very complex, you need electrical engineering background to understand okay and, and that's, that's the issue so modern design technology, when you go to higher data rate becomes very important so you go to a standardization activity, like ultra-wideband, for example, groups. Today, I mean, the original 802.11, people were computer scientists, really, with a little knowledge of modem design. Okay? But today, it's mostly dominated by people or physical layer. And they do two things. They do channel modeling. They do modem design. Performance of modem over the channel because that's the only way to increase the data rate. And data rate is core of the, da core of the uh, future of wireless in terms of technical challenges. So when you go to four generation, fourth generation, whatever, the challenge is providing higher data rates 
and in that challenge what which becomes important is understanding of behavior of the channel and understanding of the ability to compare different modem performances to select the correct modem for the higher data rate which are actually core content of this course so 802.11 has like a special group in channel modeling 802.15 has a special group in channel modeling and these groups are really active and they do a lot of measurements and things like that and then if you go for GSM they had channel model too but channel model for GSM was much more simple modem people in GSM were more low key more less signal processing oriented more RF people but when you come to 815 they are all modem designers and channel models are much more complex as we will see and those are the contents that we want to actually learn in this course why do we want to have separate courses really if you are talking about wireless networks why not one wireless course in particular that addresses our program and my courses really I have divided them for two because if you want to go too much into the system aspects then you cannot go too much in the physical layer and the channel because modern design technology is a very difficult topic and you cannot cover it in one lecture channel modeling you cannot cover it in one lecture and if you don't understand channel modeling physically you cannot say that why people went to high, how you can go to higher data rates bottom line so that's why we need like one separate course there's just too much material okay so we have mobile data network which is more system oriented and we have CS and double E and then we have this course which is double E only which is a little bit where is the complexity I think I told you a little bit about that the complexity in here is that radio propagation is very complex even the simple I mean if you want to analyze that you have to go to Maxwell's equations and those things which is impossible actually so people resort to experimental things but even experiment is very very difficult and what we talk about is a statistical analysis of measurements really so I sit and I observe what will happen to the received signal and I try to model something and I don't get to Maxwell's equation that how it propagated what was the antenna what is the pattern of antenna very generic very generic but it still is difficult but it's good actually it's fun I mean to learn how to simulate the radio channel how to, first we want to understand how it works then how to simulate it and uh, the next one I think that was the last thing that I had in here uh, so basically in this particular course that we are talking about wireless information network the emphasis of the course is on modeling of the radio channel and using that to compare the performance of different modems and then we will have at the end the latest technologies in there which is ultra wideband and indoor positioning or wireless positioning if you want to call it and uh, now I'm open for any questions and if not I will see you guys uh, next Friday for the next session